Hello, my name is Howard Cook. I'm one of the owners and the founder of Bay Area Retrofit 25 years ago. And the way I became involved in this business is I was hired by the Federal Emergency Management Agency as a subcontractor to do damage assessment as well as document injuries after the 1989 San Francisco Bay Area earthquake. And so I know a lot about it firsthand. I was also in a very large earthquake in 1992 in uh in eureka california in which i you know learned a whole lot firsthand what, what what to do at that time so anyway i'm gonna go over the things that i learned the little bit i know from interviewing people and and study that i've done so first thing i'd like to point out is that this will be the largest natural disaster in the united states and it can either be a major inconvenience or it can be a disaster, depending how you prepare for it. You know, from my point of view as a contractor with a lot of understanding of engineering, um, getting your house prepared so it doesn't collapse, fall off its foundation is the number one thing. If you have a house and it's raining, you don't care. You'll have, you know, once the utilities back together, you'll have your gas, you'll have your water, you have electricity, you'll be in great shape, you'll be able to go back to work. If you lose your house, well, you know, you know it's going to be a major, major hassle. The, it'll take years, to, I mean, uh, certainly a year or so to get your house rebuilt. The prices go through the roof for contractors, et cetera. So you want to do everything you can to avoid it on a structural point of view. And then you also want to keep yourself from getting injured. Most, uh, most, you know, most of the, the harm done in earthquakes is uh, injuries to people. Very few people die in houses. Unless you're on a steep hillside, the probability of dying in a house is extremely small. The probability of getting injured is extremely high if you don't do some things to prepare for it, and we're going to talk about that right now. First thing I want to do uh, is go over the magnitude of the disaster just with a few statistics. So here you can see that they expect 100 to 5,000 deaths. That's probably an understatement. Um, it really depends on when it happens. If it happens during commute hour and, you know, the BART goes, you know, under, under the bay, uh, there is a projection that when that happens, the, the BART will not survive. Uh, underwater and then whoever's there whatever you know embark whatever trains are going in there underneath the tube uh you know they're not going to do well i remember Jeannie perkins who was someone with the uh, association bay area governments we were working together on some preparedness project i don't remember which one it was and she told me the one place she did not want to be was in in bart underneath the bay so i just have to take her word for it and then, you know, the amount of damage, $75 billion of damage, 200,000 people injured. We're going to talk to you about how to avoid that now. And on and on, 155,000 uninhabitable houses. Uh, that's also including apartments, but lots and lots of houses, uh, especially ones that have cripple walls. But, I mean, it could be any of them. Uh, you know, just houses in general won't be habitable. But you can, you know, make your house one of those that's not as likely to be uh, uninhabitable. We do everything we can, but if you happen to be sitting right on top of the fault, even if we do everything we can, uh, we can't guarantee it'll be inhabitable. It will sure make it so it's a whole lot safer than it is now, if that is the case. Very few houses are right on top, but there are some. And then here's all the people that will be displaced. So lots and lots of people are gonna have to leave the San Francisco Bay Area. So it's gonna be a major mess. So this is an image I got. Uh, I just happened to find this from the United States Geological Survey, and it shows where they expect the, um, you know, the tracks to rupture uh, in the bay. So again, this is one place you do not want to be. And uh, hopefully, you don't know, by the time earthquake happens, uh, they'll have all this fixed up so that uh, it's not something that we have to worry about. Well, while working for FEMA as a damage inspector as well as an injury assessor, um, I, you know, discovered a few things firsthand that you won't, you know, you won't read about in a book. So the first thing I would like to say is that when they give you that duck cover hold thing where you're supposed to, you know, jump under a table and hold on to it and let the earthquake stop, well, you're very unlikely you're going to be in front of a table. And it's also true if, unless you're sitting right next to a bookcase, nothing's going to fall on your head. So wherever you happen to be, 
do stop, you know, you're not going to be able to stand up, so you don't even have to duck. The earthquake's going to make you duck. So you go ahead and you fall to the ground. You don't, you know, like I said, the earthquake's going to make you do it anyway. And you can go ahead and cover your head and just write it out. The thing that I found as far as injuries go was 99%, if not 100% of the time, it was because people were trying to run out of the house. So what happens is you're trying to run out, you, you, you get, you know, a refrigerator, you know, falls over and, and, and hits you. You're going down the stairs and then you're, you're, you're thrown off the stairs and you get hurt that way. So the, you know, houses do not implode. It's not going to, you know, cave in on you. So just stay where you are. Don't move around, you know, just stay away from anything that might fall on your head if it hadn't fallen down already and just wait it out. And once all, you know, once, once it stopped, you can go back in the house and, um, you know, yeah, I mean, go outside the house and just, you know, wait around and also be aware that the earthquake that you just experienced can very likely be a foreshock of an even larger earthquake. So, you know, stay out of your house for a while. You know, what happens is there's a there's an earthquake, then there'll be an aftershock, which might be bigger than the first one, and then there'll even be another one. So um, you need to be, you know, just aware that there's going to be bigger earthquakes. And also be aware that when you're going to be absolutely terrified, the instinct is to run out of the house. So it feels like there's, and I know this firsthand, I was in a big, big earthquake, very close to the epicenter in 1992 up in Eureka, uh, actually in Ferndale. And it feels like there's a, a monster, he's shaking your house back and forth, you know, like a, like a, you know, a, anyway, just shaking it like crazy. And then um, you just get terrified and you want to run out of the house. It, but just remember the house is not going to implode on you. It's just very frightening. It will stop. And then once it stops, you can get out of the house. So anyway, I just want to make that very clear um, that, you know, this is how you keep from getting injured. As stated earlier, the earthquake you just experienced could very well, in fact, almost for sure, is a foreshock of something that's coming afterwards. It might be bigger, it might be smaller, who knows, but it's a good chance it's going to shake like crazy. And this is what it's going to look like right after, you know, the, after the shaking stops the first time. Now, one thing, this actually happened to me. I was, when I went through that earthquake in 1992, my wife and I, we came in the house. It looked like this. We put everything back in the shelves, you know, put all the pictures back up, etc. And then another earthquake hit and knocked it all back down and everything we had preserved, you know, the few things that hadn't broken, uh, now they were all broken. So my advice is that after the earthquake, you can go back in the house, realize it's not going to implode on your head, even if the shaking starts, and put everything you have that's not broken, put it all on the ground, and once you get it on the ground, then you can leave and not worry about uh, losing the rest of your personal property. So this is just a first-hand tip that I know from experience. So anyway, I hope all this uh, information here helps you, uh, you know, feel better about the earthquake. And I hope I made some points. The first point is retrofit your house. So let's make sure it's safe. Make sure, you know, you have a place to live after the earthquake. Uh, also make sure that you know what to do when the shaking starts so you don't get injured and do some things around the house. Don't sleep underneath a bookcase that's going to fall on your head. And, you know, some other things you might want to do. Of course, there's always the food storage and having a flashlight hand Andy, and hopefully your whole community, you know, your neighborhood neighborhood group will also have some sort of emergency preparedness uh, set up as a, you know, a small community. So anyway, again, I hope all this helped you and uh, hope you're all prepared.